Greetings. This video will be part of a series of basic finance education videos, and the reason there is a need for that is because personal finance and basic finance concepts are not taught in high schools. And many would argue that is even a deliberate thing because the establishment wants to keep the masses uninformed so that the masses remain poor and don't expect more from themselves, or that concepts of finance remain too complicated for the masses to understand, if you believe in that conspiracy theory. I think it's not necessarily something that sinister. I just think that curriculum is decided by high school teachers and other education professionals who themselves don't know much about finance. Therefore, they don't necessarily realize that it is important to teach students aspects of personal finance. With that, we shall tackle one of the most persistent misconceptions in contemporary finance and stock market analysis. And that is the difference between the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. Everyone talks about the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Do you know why? Because it is the oldest, and the first of any series is usually the most famous. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was the first stock index in both the United States and in the world, and therefore it persists to this day despite the many, many limitations of that index, as we shall describe. Just like every country thinks that the first leader they had was somehow the best one. And every time a movie character is played by multiple actors, everyone always thinks the first one is the best one. Lastly, in cryptocurrency, everyone thinks Bitcoin is very important simply because it was the first cryptocurrency, even though it is the most technologically obsolete, as I describe in many other videos on this channel, just because it's first somehow. It gets the most media coverage and the less informed people believe that it is the best one. So back to the Dow Industrial Average. Here you can see from the Wikipedia page, it was started in 1885, 136 years ago, as the Dow Jones Average, and then the name changed slightly in 1896, Dow Jones Industrial Average. It comprises of 30 companies, and the reason that number was chosen is because back in those days, there really were only 30 big companies, and that was perhaps an appropriate measure of the entirety of the public market. And in those days, things were still very manual and paper-based. Only an extremely small fraction of the U.S. population actually owned any stocks to do any trade. You had to do a lot of paperwork, as in writing a paper letter to your broker to conduct the trade. And quotes were only found out in the newspaper the next day. And this was true all the way up to 1995 before the Internet. You could only find out quotes of stocks in the newspaper the next day or, at best, call your broker and through the touch key, type in the code symbol for the stock to learn of its price at 4 p.m. Eastern time. But for the most part, you had to wait until the newspaper the next day. So this was certainly true for the first 75 to 80 years after the first stock index was created, and arguably true all the way up to the first 100 years until the Internet. Now, here's the problem with the Dow Industrial Average. Problem number one, it is only weighted by the share price, not by the stock market capitalization which is a huge problem. The reason they structured it that way in the beginning was because they did not have good information of market capitalization in the very late 19th century and early 20th century. But now, to not have something weighted by market capitalization is an extremely inaccurate metric of the index's reach. And to weight it by share price is also somewhat silly because that is effectively saying that a $20 bill is worth more than two $10 bills and is worth a lot more than $21 bills. That, of course, causes all types of distortions. So as we scroll down, we see the 30 stocks that are currently in the Dow Industrial Average. And it takes a long time for them to update the index and rotate out old companies and bring in new ones because they have a requirement that it should have been profitable for a certain number of years. That's why I forget Facebook and Tesla, even though each of those companies is over three quarters of a trillion dollars in value. Even Google is not in the Dow Industrial Average because it is not established enough. It hasn't been around long enough. And in an era of accelerating change, when more and more big tech companies will emerge in a short and shorter time, you will get more examples of trillions of dollars worth of market capitalization not represented in this index. When Google and Amazon are not in this index, then you see how obsolete the structure, the system of this index actually is. Now, the problem is, a lot of people still think this index is the important one to look at from a stock market perspective. When they talk about it, when uninformed novices talk about the stock market, they say the Dow was up, the Dow was down, whereas grown-ups use the S&P 500 index, as I will talk about later in this video. That's problem number one. Problem number two 
since the index started so long ago, it has grown to a large value. That is good, but the financial media deliberately speaks in terms of points in its movement. The Dow Industrial Average today is 34,500. Therefore, 345 points is only a 1% movement, which is a typical daily movement, 1% up or down, either way. But headlines will continue to scare people. Oh, the Dow fell 345 points or the Dow fell 1,000 points, which is 3%. And forget the old media doing that. Even YouTube channels devoted to personal finance still talk about points. The Dow fell 400 points. Why? Because the media makes more money by making you frightened than by telling you that no big event occurred. It's no big deal. Nothing major happened. And therefore, this points thing is going to get worse and worse. It won't be very long before the Dow Industrial Average is 100,000 points. That's only a tripling relative to today. And therefore, every day will be 1,000 points, let's say. And the media will have meltdowns every single day because 1,000 points, 1,000 points, 1,000 points. Let's say in 1987, the Dow Industrial Average fell 500 points in a huge crash. And yeah, that was 20% of the value at that time in 1987. But now 500 points is only 1.5%. It's not even really news. This perpetuation of a misleading narrative by the media draws in a lot of unsophisticated people into weird conversations. And everyone will say, the Dow fell 1,000 points today with no irony. Like, yeah, it went up 1,000 points four days ago as well. So what? That's not a large percentage. So in short, those are the problems with the Dow Industrial Average. It cannot keep up with the rate of technological change in the modern world and the speed at which big companies are formed. Just case in point, both Google and Amazon are not even in the Dow 30. And the media exacerbates the problem by describing the index as the primary index and its movements in terms of points rather than percentages because the media wants to scare people with large numbers or create more dramatic impact with large numbers. So you will lose nothing if you never ever pay attention to the Dow Industrial Average. So this leads us to the question of, if not the Dow Industrial Average, what is the broadest index of stock market performance for the United States and therefore for the entire world. The real index that grown-ups use is the S&P 500, which was started, as you can see, in 1957, meaning 64 years ago. It's still pretty old, but it is not nearly as old as the Dow Industrial Average, and that is why it did the correct thing of being weighted by market cap. The S&P 500 consists of 500 of the largest publicly traded companies in the United States, comprising 97 to 98% of the market, but it is market cap weighted. Therefore, the largest company, which is Apple, carries a much greater weight than the smallest out of the 500. So let me do a comparison chart between the two for summarization. The Dow Jones Industrial Average versus the S&P 500. Dow Jones Industrial Average is 30 stocks, not market cap weighted. And the total value is 8.3 trillion of those 30 stocks. The S&P 500 is 500 stocks, market cap weighted. Yes, the total value is 33 trillion. So it's a much broader measure of the entire stock market. And as I said, it comprises 97, 98% of the value of the entire United States stock market. And depending how you count it, 30 to 40% of the profits in the S&P 500 are derived outside the U.S. So it comprises its own global diversification to some extent as well. And therefore, currency hedging risk as well as international profit diversification is already achieved through the S&P 500 index. The smallest company in the S&P 500 might have a market cap as low as $3 billion, but that is because it has been there for a long time and has declined over time. New tech companies that try and get to the S&P 500 usually have to be $20, $25, $30 billion before they will even be considered. And even then, there's requirements for them having had to have had revenue for a certain amount of time, some path to profitability, things like that. It was recently a media event that Tesla was not in the S&P 500, even though it was $700 billion in market cap. And that is just a smaller version of the problem that the Dow has and why Amazon and Google are still not among the Dow 30 stocks. But the S&P 500 is much more resistant to that type of situation than the Dow Industrial Average is. Now, in terms of returns, if you take the S&P 500 since virtually the very beginning until now, you not only see the huge returns, $1 invested early on would be a huge amount of money today, but the exponential rate of economic progress is also quite evident. It's really a very smooth parabola, and this does not include the dividends reinvested. The dividends are anywhere from 15 to 20% of the total returns of the S&P 500, so your total return would be even a little bit better than this on this chart. 
And that's why I continue to make fun of people who say buy gold because there might be inflation. At no point in the last 60 years did gold outperform the S&P 500 from that chosen point to present. Whether you choose a time 10, 20, 40, 50, or 60 years ago, gold would have underperformed terribly relative to just the S&P 500. And that is a fact. And if you understand the first principles of technology and economics, that is not a surprise because the S&P 500 ultimately is about companies creating equity valuation increases, whereas gold is just an inert element of which the supply can always be increased with technological progress. And now technology is advanced enough that the rate of supply increase response is much faster than before. So if you're wondering about that topic, which comes up in other videos, then this is a good way to think about that as well. So there you have it. That is the difference between the two major indices. And remember, the first step towards becoming a sophisticated equity market observer and investor is to realize that the S&P 500 is ultimately the major metric of the U.S. stock market and therefore the entire world stock market. The Dow Industrial Average is just an anachronism from an earlier time and is not useful today as a metric of movement, particularly when a large number of people describe it in terms of point movements rather than percentage movements. I hope this video helps you filter out that type of misdirection and misinformation. If you find this type of content interesting, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and thank you very much for watching.